Howdy my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead29 here on YouTube. And in this video today, we're going to review how to use a timing light. What we're trying to see with this guy and what our ultimate goal is in using this essential tuning tool that you should all have in your garage. So with that, let's jump right in. Now since everyone's gonna say, why don't you ever do a poll in the truck? I guess we'll do one today. Try and roll into first, easy. So many times we make inaccurate assumptions and I want you to underline that in your brain. Inaccurate assumptions about our off idle ignition timing events that cause us to leave a lot of potential power on the table. And obviously it's no surprise that there is an optimal time in the cylinder stroke to ignite the cylinder charge to make the most power. Anything later where you are firing that cylinder charge at some point down the stroke is just wasted potential power that's just not being utilized. And it's not about more timing, which is a common misconception. It's about correct timing. The closer we can get to that optimal point, the more power we're gonna make. It's just that simple. So really quick here, timing lights and how they work. Essentially all budget timing lights function off of the same principle, powered by the vehicle's battery. With the pickup clip to spark plug wire number one, every time a spark passes through the wire, it triggers the timing light to emit a flash of light, which when pointed at your harmonic balancer provides you with a momentary snapshot of your ignition timing. So, you know, where your timing pointer lines up with your degree on your balancer is where your timing is, of course, at. Well, that seems pretty simple, right? Well, kind of. Now, a lot of harmonic balancers don't have timing marks all the way up until 30 to 40 degrees or so, which we need to track all of our timing events. Some engine designs like the Chevrolet put the advanced values on the timing tab itself, although this still doesn't get us all the way up to the timing values we need to see, which is what causes so many folks to make mistakes with their timing. Now, we can make timing tape or buy it, but you know, it really quickly falls off or washes away with normal use. It's really just a headache. Now, even some balancers that do have timing marks out there, you know, the timing values will, over time from driving around road, grime, and dirt, they'll still become difficult to see, and um, it's just kind of hard to deal with. Now, the easiest, least frustrating way that I have found to work with your ignition timing is to simply use an advanced timing light like this guy here. Now, with these, all you need to do is make a mark that's very easy to see on the zero point on your harmonic balancer, and then just to give you an example of how it works here, basically the timing light itself handles the advance. So if you have your dial set to 10 degrees here and your timing pointer is now lining up with this zero mark, effectively you have 10 degrees of advance at that point. You know, if this were up at 15 degrees and these were lining up, then you know you would have 15 degrees of advance when everything's aligned. So pretty simple and straightforward. You know, that mitigates a lot of the issues, you know, that you can have with different things with uh, trying to see your timing marks. Now, as far as harmonic balancers go and your true zero mark, this is something I wanna point out that you wanna watch out for. Uh, basically, Ford, Chevrolet, they move their timing pointers around quite a bit throughout the years. So um, it's not uncommon to have a balancer that doesn't align with zero at true top dead center. So what I encourage you to do is to get a uh, piston stop and determine what your true top dead center is. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go over how to do that in this video, but I will do the little write up in the description below of how to go through and use one of these guys and determine where true D TDC is on your balancers. All right, so a quick demo on the timing light itself here. Um, it's very important that you have your vacuum advance disconnected because we just wanna get a reading on our mechanical advance here. And ideally you'd have it plugged at the carburetor so we have our timing light here, and right now it's set to five degrees. Now this is gonna tell us where our advance is at versus the harmonic balancer. So again, we're just looking for when that zero mark lines up with our timing pointer. So right now, I've turned our timing down a little bit, retarded our timing to five degrees. 
and everything is lining up. Now what I'm gonna do is now I've advanced our distributor probably two or three degrees or so. And now my timing pointer is not lining up with the zero point on my harmonic balancer. So we're going to advance our timing light a little bit, get another reading here, almost there. This goes to show how much a little change makes. So now we're at about eight or nine degrees of advance. And now our timing light is lining up correctly where we're seeing that zero degree mark line up with our timing pointer. So that's just a little walkthrough on the advanced timing light itself. Pretty simple. This is where so many folks make assumptions about their ignition timing events that cost them a lot of power. And I'm sure some of you know where I'm going with this, but too often, a lot of folks have just very late total timing numbers. You know, they're leaving a lot of potential power on the table that their engine would be otherwise capable of if their ignition timing, um, their total timing number was correct or something reasonable. You know, it might be late from uh, maladjustment, worn parts, or just the conservative nature of stock parts in general. But if you can't see it, how would you ever even know? And you know, you, you really wouldn't. And this is where the advanced timing light shows through because it gives you that capability to see these timing events. So to get a reading on your total timing, ideally you would have a tack under the hood or a buddy in the cab who can tell you your RPM. But all you have to do here is continue to rev the engine slowly and there will come a point where your timing advance stops increasing as RPM continues to increase. That timing value is your total timing and the RPM you first hit this at is the RPM that all your advance is in by. So in my case, it's 32 to 33 degrees, all in by 3,300 RPM or so. <clears throat> all right, so let's talk total timing here. Really all it is is the combination of your timing advance by your springs and stop bushings here, the amount of advance that, that brings in, in addition to your initial timing, both of those combined um, equate out to your total timing value, which you wanna have all in by about 3000 RPM. Now, one of the reasons that we have timing advance is that for a set cylinder pressure for a specific cylinder volume, that burn time on that mixture is relatively the same. So just reviewing RPM alone, as engine speed increases, we have to ignite that mixture earlier and earlier in the cycle to burn that cylinder charge at the right time. Um, again, too early or too late is just leaving power on the table. Now, I'm sure with that narrative, it's kind of weird that we stop advancing ignition timing at about 3000 RPM or so. Now, the strange piece to this and the most commonly accepted theory is that after about 3000 RPM, somewhere in that range, actually the air coming into the cylinder, the turbulence created, um, really helps to speed up the burn time on that cylinder charge. So effectively the timing is still advancing, but it's no longer being advanced mechanically by the distributor. So, you know, I don't know, by some witchcraft and wizardry, the timing advances, no one really knows. Now, one thing that we do have a for sure understanding on with ignition timing is that the higher the compression the engine, the less total timing it's gonna require. And it's really conceptually pretty simple. If you think about it, a higher compression engine is going to take that cylinder volume and really compress everything. And all those particles are a lot closer together. So it's much easier for the flame to propagate from particle to particle. And that burn time is effectively much quicker. And remember, this isn't about timing advance. We just wanna fire the mixture at the right point in the cylinder stroke here and anything outside of that's just leaving power on the table. So if you have a quicker burn time, you don't need as much ignition timing advance to fire that mixture again at the right time. Now, lower compression engines, of course, you know, they will want more uh, total timing because again, they're not compressing that mixture as much. It takes longer for the flame to propagate from particle to particle. And so to fire that mixture at the right time, 
it takes more total timing advance. And just to apply this to the real world, think of, you know, like the supercharged galaxy here or turbo engines. This is why we pull ignition timing for boost. You know, you're cramming those particles together. It, the burn time is much quicker. You know, you don't need as much ignition timing. Now concerning street engines um, that run on pump gas, what I've seen is that the range is usually 30 to 38 degrees of total timing, depending on the engine build. Um, most often, if you're somewhere out of that spectrum, most likely you need to go back and review your ignition timing events because they're probably out of spectrum a little bit. This 64 Galaxy I just picked up is a prime example. Very lazy total timing numbers. So check this out, you know, this is the mechanical timing. It's only making 25 degrees total and also really isn't even returning to its static position. So it obviously has some issues I need to address. And stuff like this is typically caused by rust or corrosion. Oftentimes a simple dab of grease every now and then goes a long way in keeping your distributor parts working the way they should. Now really I've seen that folks tend to avoid messing with their ignition timing events because it's very difficult to manipulate a stock style distributor. And I don't blame them, I share the same opinion. And in a lot of vehicles like my F100 and others, I run uh, Pertronics ignition parts where with their pro billet distributor, you have a lot of um, control. It's very easy to work with your different timing advance curves, your springs, um, your advance limiters and everything like that. Now the one drawback to these old school engines and the inherent nature of the design of old school distributors is their mechanical parts and they wear and over time you know you have some loss in consistency of your tune. Now a few months ago I met Ted from Progression Ignition. He had just started the company but originally he was so sick of these issues he went out and made his own line of distributors that basically the timing curves are all digital but you don't need a little handheld whatever that's tied to your distributor. All you need is your phone. You can connect via Bluetooth with your smartphone to his distributor while your engine is running and manipulate your ignition timing events and perfect you know, your timing curves and whatever. Um, you know, you're not limited by different things. It's just really cool and I'll roll clip on one of his videos here, but I got um, this distributor here from him for my supercharged engine and I'm pretty excited to use it. So before you run out and spend all the money for like an MSD, these are relatively the same price and I encourage you to at least look it up and see what you think. So um, anyway, with that, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys learned something. Again, you know, if you don't have a timing light, pick one up. Uh, these advanced timing lights are really easy to work with. And, uh, you know, ignition timing is just free horsepower. If it's not correct, you're leaving a ton of power on the table. And, um, you know, it's worth taking a look at. So with that, we'll catch you guys later. See you around.